Yo, what's going on, buddy? This is Don't Talk Sports. My name is Dylan. In today's video, what I'm going to be doing is, as you can see by the title and thumbnail, John Cena from the WWE has officially announced that he's going to be retiring in the 2025 uh, year. He's going to be retiring. He said on the telecast of Money in the Bank that he was possibly going to retire in Re at WrestleMania is what we thought he was kind of leaning toward. Then he revealed he's going to go from the year of January and do like a full-on farewell tour all the way through the month of December. If you have not seen the clip, I'll put it up on screen now so you can kind of see what, what I'm talking about. Like I said, he kind of went through and he talked about him going to be going through uh, money are uh, going through the entire month from January to December of the 2025 uh, WWE I guess you could say season from what he said he's gonna be juggling a lot of things obviously he's still doing a lot of movies so he's not gonna be like full-time in WWE he's not gonna be like every single Monday Night Raw every single Smackdown he's gonna be kind of in and out I still think but the purpose of today's video is kind of looking back on John Cena his career everything about him and then I kind of want to talk about as a fan I used to watch WWE I kind of stopped watching here but I would say like three four years ago I kind of got out of it but growing up John Cena was my favorite wrestler of all time Time. He, he still is to this day. It's usually him, Undertaker, and Kane kind of up in those like the Brother of the Destruction along with John Cena, Triple H. Those guys have always been my favorites along with Randy Orton. Roman Reigns has kind of grown on me here the past couple years. But with the purpose of John Cena, like I said, I want to talk about what could we be in store for in the 2025. Like I said, I guess you could say WWE season and what my expectations are for John Cena because for one of the biggest things going back to 2017 whenever he won his 16th world title was we want John Cena to have the 17th title. Some people said they don't want it. Some people said they do. I'm on the boat that I do. I want him to pass Ric Flair and have the 17th World Championship so he can officially be the all-time leader in World Championship. Because for so many years, the past like 15 years, he's been the face of WWE. Make him be the face and have the title reign. But without further ado, I'm gonna get straight into this. So if you go to enjoy, as always, make sure you go and drop a like on this video. Be very much appreciated with you. So, but without further ado, let's get into it. Now, as you can see here from the ESPN article, uh, they kind of talked about, uh, kind of like pieced together some of the things he talked about because he was talking for a good eight minutes. I also have that link down in the description below of him like actually doing his uh, speech uh, on Money in the Bank. He said there and also in after or after the show was over, he had uh, interviews with the press. Con it went on for like, I want to say like 15 minutes. I'll also have that linked in the description. But he was kind of talking about some of the events that he's going to be at. And it says here he's going to be doing about 30 to 40 uh, dates throughout that time. He's going to be at Royal Rumble. He's going to be at Elimination Chamber. And WrestleMania 41 is also going to be uh, one of the events he's going to be at and it says here quote i approached the wwe with this idea and they kind of initiated the talks that this would be a great span of time if we were ever going to do it quote which kind of makes sense because he is about 47 years old 48 47 something like that and he he's pushing age he's kind of more focused on the movie role he's kind of taking the trajectory that the rock took the rock got up there in age he kind of focused more on the movies as we see now the rock's pretty much become like the biggest superstar in Hollywood with that. I'm not saying John Cena is going to go down that road, but he's, he's doing pretty good with his movies. He's got some good movies out there. Here's the thing I'm kind of upset with with John Cena. I wish two things, two things. I wanted, like I said, in the intro, I said, I want John Cena to win his 17th world title. I want him to have the world title win the WWE Championship is 17 time. I want him to pass Ric Flair. I want it to just be over. Nobody's saying we want him to win it and then be the hold on to it for many 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 months we're just saying if he if the wwe wants to write it in that he wins it and then he loses it at the very next pay-per-view so be it he's a 17 time world champion he can write off into the sunset now i think one of the questions people are going to ask is like who, how could they kind of write in john cena like a storyline to make him go for the wwe title i'm not gonna lie like i said i haven't watched wwe in like forever so i had no clue who the wwe title or holder was cody rhodes he's the champion i never would have thought that in a million years i thought Roman Reigns was still holding on the title about two years ago uh clearly not anymore for those of you who are the avid like wwe fans people that watch wwe like night in night out can some of you like help me out with storylines tell me what kind of storyline could they if you're a wwe uh, john cena fan what kind of storylines do you think they could possibly write in could they make it uh, is there something along the lines where John Cena and Cody Rhodes could maybe have a few? Could Cody maybe lose the title to somebody that John Cena has had a rivalry with in the past? Because the way I look at the story is this. I look at John Cena going into this. I see if he can win the Royal Rumble. Maybe they can do it like that. Maybe he can win the Royal Rumble in like one last hoorah. He wins the Royal Rumble and then he can go to WrestleMania to have a chance to win a title. He could also be in the Elimination Chamber. He could also be put in the Elimination Chamber and there's two opportunities right there for him to have a shot at the WWE title. Because even if John Cena is going to be, as we see, like I said, 30 to 40 dates, not a lot. If he's going to be like a part-timer, kind of like what Brock Lesnar was here towards the end of his career in the WWE, whenever he was like just popping in every like two, three months, just showing up, doing like a quick little uh, fight, wrestle or war title fight. If they want to do it along those lines, they can do that. Just make it to where John Cena 
like I said, if he wins Royal Rumble, wins Elimination Chamber, one of those two, and then he goes, wins the title at WrestleMania. Some people said a quick storyline that they could possibly try to come up with is him versus Randy Orton, because him and Randy Orton were like the rivals back whenever they first came in WWE. Could they maybe like renew the rivalry? Randy Orton, I think, is also on the end or like on the tailspin of his career. Maybe they could try to make them both just go at it one last time before they both exit out the door. Now, real quick before I wrap it up, like I said, this is the website I was talking about earlier about him and John Cena, uh, all his stats and everything about him. He's had probably one of the greatest WWE crews we've ever seen. From the like showmanship to just catching the eyes of adults to kids to teens, everybody in between making people fall in love with the WWE, him winning, him winning titles, him selling the audience. He's been the best, like the, the, the mic skills. He is the guy that the WWE probably dreamt of back in the day and they were like when he when he got to the WWE they were like thank god for him to come to our business as we can see here 2000 over 2000 matches he won 1800 of them so he has a 78 percent a win percentage in his matches when it comes to awards that he's won over the years i mean 174 awards like i'll scroll if you kind of want to look at him but like he's he's won quite a few awards in the wwe and when it comes to him winning titles as you can see he's won quite a bit of titles he's a two-time wwe world tag team champion uh a five-time united states champion a 13-time wwe champion two-time world tag team champion uh two three-time world heavyweight champion back whenever it was that uh, he's a UPW uh, heavyweight champion, OVW Southern Tag Team champion, and an OVW heavyweight champion back whenever he was in a different league. Now, when it comes to WWE and the way they use John Cena in his rivalries, this is one thing I want to kind of end it off on. He was like, like I said, he was like the best salesman or salesman whenever it comes to just bringing eyes because of the way he was able to sell rivalries as well. John Cena had some of the best rivalries out there, and one of them is not even on this list. For some of you that maybe don't remember, was it 2013, 2014? I can't remember the year exactly. Uh, when he had that feud with Ryback, oh my god, like what was it, the three stages of Hell Match? That was fucking insane. And what was it, was it Extreme Rolls or Payback, one of the two where he had it? They had the ambulance match. Oh my god, I was like on the edge of my seat watching that shit. But when it comes to his other rivals, he had some good rivals. Bray Wyatt was interesting uh, for the rating, them saying that uh, Brock Lesnar was a lower rating. What the fuck match were you watching? Brock Lesnar and John Cena had some of the bloodiest, most grueling matches ever. Now, if this is kids braiding it or adults trying to be like, oh, this isn't kids friendly, who fucking cares? It was, it was like awesome back then. CM Punk and John Cena was awesome. Edge was awesome. Kurt Angle, like I said, Randy Orton up there, uh, Triple H. These were like the rivals, and it just seemed like no matter what, if John Cena was rivaling against you, you were going to sell tickets, you were going to be at the top of the uh, night, you were going to have the main event, you were going to be fighting for world titles. Now, ultimately, kind of wrapping up, like I said, when it comes to John Cena, I the main thing that they need to make happen for him, like I said, win the 17th title if they can make it happen. Wh whether it's Royal Rumble or Elimination Chamber, one of those two needs to happen so he can have his opportunity. I feel like the WWE, they're going to force some things. There's going to be some events where it's like, you're going to go into it and you're going to be like, this this is John Cena's to lose. He's not losing this. He it, They're going to write it in that he's going to win this. And then I feel like the rest of the year, they're not really going to put him in a lot of matches to where it's like, oh, let's, let's just throw him in a random match here or throw him in a random match here. They're going to make it to where like he's going to be every match or anything he's kind of in there for it's going to serve a purpose. And then the last thing I think is kind of interesting, one of the things he said in the post uh, Money Bank interviews, whenever he was talking to the press, he said after he's done, once December comes and he has like that final match, whatever it may be, he's never going to be getting in the ring. He's he's throwing the jorts up. He's throwing the sneakers up. He's done. He'll be suit and tie, dress shirts. He's not going to go in there as like a, a guest referee. He's never going to get in the ring to wrestle or any physical stature again. He is done. He's not wrestling anymore. He's not starring in anything uh, WWE-wide. He will come out there. He'll be like maybe some behind-the-scenes stuff, help out the WWE in any way if they need help like that. But when it comes to him wrestling, the knee pads are up, the shirts are up, the jorts are up. He's not doing it anymore. Next year, December 2025, If basically if you want to go see John Cena in person, the next pay-per-view events throughout the entire year of 2025, if you want to go see John Cena in person, Buy your tickets now because it's the last time you're ever going to see it. But other than that, I think I'm going to wrap it up there. Hopefully you guys did go and enjoy today's video. If you did enjoy it, as always, make sure you go and drop a like on today's video. Be very much appreciated if you do so. If you wanted to watch the entirety of today's video, thank you very much. And like I said, if you have a different opinion, do you agree or disagree with anything I said? Uh, do you think John Cena is going to go down as probably one of the greatest WWE superstars to ever live? Do you think he uh, is making the right decision by going out now? What do you think about my opinion about John Cena needing to get the 17 title? Do you think he should, should not? 
whatever your opinion may be whenever it comes to all this stuff. And like I said, WWE fans, let me know the storylines. If there's anything I'm missing, leave your complete opinions down in the comment section down below. Be more than welcome to talk about to you guys. If you're a fan of the content that I do post here and you want to go and hit that big red subscribe button, feel free to do so. And do not forget to hit that little notification bell to be notified the second I post. But without further ado, this has been Dylan Talk Sports. Have a great day. Peace.